welcome everyone. We have a special guest with us today. Founding pillar of our diocese for sure. <laughs> we have His Excellency Bishop Matthew Ustricki with us today. And uh, Bishop Ustricki lives with us here in Guelph at the rectory. And he is a big part of what happens here on a day-to-day -day, weekly basis. So welcome Bishop. Thank you for Thank taking you. the time of your busy schedule. You just had mass, I know. So um, we're just going to, I'm just going to ask a few questions just so the people can get to know you from the parish and uh, from around. And um, I got some simple questions, but you simple. and I do go back quite a while. We've known each other for quite a while. And I'll talk about my favorite memory I have with you okay. later on, but uh, it's always stuck with me since a young child. So, but uh, let's just start out about your early calling, uh, the experience you, when you felt, first felt you were called to the priesthood and how that uh, shaped your early life. That was in 1951 and uh, <clears throat> he had con contracted uh, uh, what is it? Strep throat uh, disease, which affected uh, affected his kidneys, and he died from that. And uh, so uh, he was a, a year younger than I was, and so uh, that you know I was in grade thirteen. I lost some time because he was in the hospital and and so on, and uh, so kind of my as I say, kind of my world fell apart, and so. I decided, well, I, I, I was going to go to work. And there was an opening uh, at fiberglass in the, in the, in the uh, chemical lab. And so I applied and they said, fine, we'll hire you, but you better, uh, excuse me, you, we need a letter of reference. So I said, gee, who do I go to? So I went to the pastor. He wasn't there. An associate w was there. And he says, oh, sure, I'll give it to you. And he wrote a letter and gave it to me. And as I was going out the door, uh, he said, Matt, you know where you should go. And I, that hit me like a ton of bricks. And uh, uh, I, I went to university. I got my university degree through, uh, uh, through, uh, from Ottawa uh, because uh, St. Jerome's was uh, affiliated with Ottawa University. And... Uh, and uh, so, so the, that kept bug, bugging, bug, bugging me, if I could put it that way, <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. So I came to the pastor and I said, listen, I, I'll, I'll go to the seminary, I'll give it a try. Well, here I am 65 years later. <laughs> and no looking back, no regrets no. or nothing at all. No. And I can tell that your life of ministry has been one of no regrets. No. Because you've always been positive and uplifting and... Thank you, Joseph. Yeah, no, I have to say it's uh, lots of, I've, I've met lots of clergy in my life, but few have the effect on me like uh, like you have over the years. So, and, and I think it's extra special that you're actually living here now uh -huh. with us and that you can be part of the everyday life here. So, thank you. It's wonderful. It's wonderful. And which seminary did you attend? I attended St. Saint Augustine Seminary. St. Augustine. Uh, and in 62, when the Vatican, Vatican Council uh, uh, began, uh, my, my bishop, Bishop Ryan, at that time uh, said, uh, you know, you're coming to Rome with me to do some studies in church law. And so I went to, uh, went to Rome from 62 to 64. Okay, okay. Yeah. And um, yeah, any, any big memories stand out from Rome, your time there? The council. The council, okay, yeah. Uh, it was I, an exciting time. Well, I don't know what you want to say. I'll exciting. never forget the opening day. Uh, there was a few of us priests kind of snuck into the uh, the stairwell uh, in the Vatican that, that, that leads uh, into the square, and I was so imp I was impressed by the bishops that were coming out, elderly p uh, priests. You know, they were some were being assisted by their their secretaries, and so on. And the thing that crossed my mind is says you know that the church is dependent on these on these human beings i've never forgotten that th thought but uh, it, it was a, it was a sight to see you know the, the over 2000 bishops going into the into the st peter's at that time right i remember pictures from that just seeing it was almost like a bleacher set or that's something right. like that. Just, exactly, that's the way it was I've set up. I've never seen a site like that in my life. It was just so many people inside. That's right, that's at right. St. Peter's, unbelievable. And uh, 
and the upper levels were the observers from the, uh, the different other religions, right. uh, Christian religions. And, and, and I think there was, there was even a, a delegation from the Muslims. Yeah. So we were kind of ecclesiastic back then with, uh, with different denominations. Absolutely. Right? Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah. Well, because the council itself was uh, <clears throat> set up to uh, basically bring about Christian unity. Uh, uh, because, you know, the scandal of Christianity is that we're so, so, so fragmented, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, so Pope uh, John XXIII was hoping that through this council there would be more unity. It's, we're still working at it. <laughs> Pope John the Twenty, the good Pope. That's we right. now have his image on the in the basilica there, That's painted right. on with John Paul II, exactly. now, which is which right. is nice. What was your per first parish here in the, the Hamilton Diocese that you served? My first parish was I was I was assigned uh, secretary to Bishop Ryan, and uh, an associate at the cathedral, so that was my first assignment. So in the mornings, I would work uh, w with him in the chancery office, and in the afternoons, I would spend in, in the parish, in the cathedral parish, and, and I enjoyed that tremendously because uh, I was involved with people, and so it, it was just not, uh, as you might say, secretarial work, right. uh, you know. So, so that, that was my first parish. And then uh, 10 years later, <laughs> I was sent to Our Lady of Lourdes in Hamilton, okay. yeah. you know, and I was there for uh, three, three, four years, mm -hmm. and then I was brought back to the cathedral as rector, and I was there for uh, five, five years, I think, and then I was made pastor of St. Anne's in Ancaster. Ancaster, right. Yeah. Now, were you at the cathedral when the fire occurred there? No, just after. Just after, okay. All right. Yeah, I, I, no, I, I left the cathedral. Okay. And uh, they, a lot of times Bishop Redding would uh, jokingly said that Yastricki uh, was annoyed that I moved them, so he set the lights on fire. <laughs> Which they got very fortunate that it didn't cause more damage than that, it did. Exactly. And yeah. uh, they yeah. did a nice job fixing it. Renovating. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's wonderful. Um, Auxiliary Bishop, when you were called to that, what, what was going through your... It's got to be very special to be picked and nominated it was, because it's your peers that, that kind of nominate you, right? I was surprised, you know, uh, when the, 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 the nuncio phoned and uh, said, uh, will you accept? Uh, you've been nominated and uh, uh, Pope uh, John Paul II uh, is nominated new auxiliary, uh, auxiliary bishop of uh, of Hamilton. So uh, you know it was a surprise. It was a joy. It was fear. All of these elements were there. You know. But you've got quite. A, you get a little bit of a history with Pope John Paul. Yes, I do. You know, maybe there's a picture. I'm going to post a picture that people can see of you meeting. And you've had some conversations with him. And I remember the conversation where you had to get going that one time. I, well, there was. There was one uh, one time uh, Bishop Tonus and I uh, were in Rome at a, at a, at a limited visit, and uh, he got called back because uh, his sister was very became very seriously ill, and they thought that she might die. So I was worried that uh, I would not see the Pope. Anyway, all the other Ontario bishops had gone in to see the Pope, and. Uh, I wasn't called, and finally, uh, it was a Saturday morning uh, at 11.30, uh, I was called to, uh, to see Pope John Paul. And so the secretary brought me in and uh, sat me across from him and uh, then left the room. And so we chatted, and uh, since I was with him, and I thought, well, I said, Holy Father, uh, uh, my Polish won't be, it won't be that polished. <laughs> <laughs> and he laughed and he, he grabbed me by the arm and he says, you're doing okay. And so we chatted for about 15 minutes and he said, I'd love this conversation to carry on, but he says, I got to get down to the square. And so we parted. And by the time I got down to the, to the gate, 
he was already in a Pope mobile going around yeah. visiting the people. It, it was uh, to sit down and talk with him was like sitting down uh, and speaking with your grandfather. At least for me at that at that time in my life. A profound experience. Yeah, yeah it, 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 it really, you know. And I met him on a few other occasions, you know. Yeah. And uh, uh, I remember one occasion uh, with the Ontario bishops who were there, and we were we had celebrated mass with him, and then he had invited us uh, uh, into the room to, uh, just to to meet each one of us, and uh, he, he came over to me and uh, he says. Uh, when I said, I, I, I'm from Hamilton, and so he said, well, do you know this Father Joe? And, and, and I said, yes, if you might find Joe Cap Capiga. And I said, I do know him, Holy Father. And uh, about be, uh, before, uh, before we start talking, he says to me, uh, are you number one or are you number two? And I said, I'm number two. <laughs> <laughs> he had a sense of humor, you know. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. But Number two, you were still quite prominent. You had a lot of duties as a, an auxiliary bishop, I remember. Confirmations yeah. and such like that. But now I notice even here at the Basilica, we do the Marian Days and things like that, which you're always a big part of around here, which is so nice. And I think it makes the difference that Father Ian is very... very he's very good. Bit, he's very good to me. So yes, very and including you with everything. And I just know that when we see you sitting in the choir at the side there, it's, it's, it makes it that much more special. Thank you. you know, kind of thing. And the fact that you're celebrating Mass every Sunday at 9 o'clock, I mean, that's that's pretty special too. Thank you. You know, um, is there any um, significant achievements or something that you're particularly proud of through your tenure? I know you go to Rome quite a bit. You used to go to Rome quite a bit. and uh, uh, Achievements? I think my greatest achievements has been, been in the confessional. <laughs> You know, and uh, confirmations. I, lo I, I love confirming the kids and speaking to with uh, with them. And as as a priest, uh, uh, the the sick were very always very close to me. Uh, I, I, I guess I learned that uh, from uh, uh, from my father, who was uh, a man that was ailing for many for many, many years uh, from silicosis. And uh, so uh, the uh, the sick, the elderly. Uh, I I never tired from vis visiting hospitals and so on. Uh, and even uh, for the for the uh, number of years that I've been in Guelph, I've uh, right now I only say mass once uh, once a week at St Joseph's Health Center, but. Bef uh, before COVID, I was saying Mass there every day. I was just going to mention that. A lot of people might not know that, but you were at St. Joe's every day saying Mass and yeah. visiting with the sick. And we would see you faithfully pull out every day, and we knew where you were headed. And uh, quite a wonderful way to, you know, because I've been up there. I used to visit John Marin when he was up there, yeah. things like that. And as nice as and beautiful a place as it is, I see that people still get lonely. And it's it would be oh, so absolutely. nice, you know. You know. Absolutely. You know, uh, you know, that's why a lot of them, if they could get down to the, to the hall, or rather to the entrance, just to see, to see people coming yeah. in, yeah. you know, uh, because a lot of them, you know, people, people would visit Christmas and Easter, you know, and bring a little flower and so on, mm -hmm. but that, that's fine. But, uh, you know, it's the day to day, uh, <clears throat> you know, uh, and, and, and that's, how can I put it? I think this is one of uh, the sad part of our culture that the uh, now some some would uh, challenge me on what I'm going to say, but uh, we have neglected our elderly, you know, uh, and just to to uh, put them up in the, in the retirement homes or nursing homes and so on, you know, fine, they can be beautifully decorated and so on, but. You know, COVID has taught us an, an awful lot in regard to relationship with with one another. You know, uh, it's not enough to talk to somebody on the phone. Uh, 
it's it's face to face that's so important i know the pandemic was very challenging I remember visiting my father-in-law through a glass window from the outside to the inside on a phone and you could just see each other through the glass that's just, right i can't imagine how know, they felt hey. i know how i felt and it was just like you feel helpless like you can't do anything but that was i guess we're lucky that we could at least do that that's right you know, kind yeah. of thing and at least see the person as you're talking to them well you know during COVID, the uh, <clears throat> There are a few people saying, you know, I'd love to go holy to go holy, to a holy communion, and uh, so I said, well, uh, drive up. Uh, I'll be at the door of the rectory at uh, nine thirty, and uh, I said I'll give you a holy communion. So I said I, I started with two or three, and uh, by the end of COVID, I said I had over forty people dri driving up, really. For, it was, because I remember we'd have like adoration. Yeah. Uh, there are people who are parked out there because that's you know, right. We that's right. They couldn't live without the, the and it was nice to see that they could not live without the Lord yeah. or they needed to have and we set that up for them and it seemed to be you and, know. and this was based on a, a on a device that I remember when I was studying in Rome. Uh, and uh one of the professors is it was Father Mark Sayi. He was a, uh, a Dominican from Malta that was teaching us canon law. And uh, one day uh, it, 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 at the lecture, he was asking some questions and I put my hand up in, re that were in regard to mixed marriages. And uh, so uh, after I answered him, he says, I want to see you at the, at the end of the lecture. <laughs> so I, I thought, oh gee, I got myself into trouble. Anyway, to make the long story short, <clears throat> he uh, he says, uh, come on up to my room. And so I went up to uh, with him and I, I sat down and he poured me a little glass of wine and one for himself. And uh, so we chatted and uh, he says to me, listen, learn something from the Italians here. He says, you English, you Germans, you have a problem, you got to go through it. He says, look at the Italian. Uh, he says, maybe eventually he will, ha will, he will do that, go through them. But he says, he first tries to figure out how can I get around it. And so during COVID, that, that came to mind. And, and, and that was my, my approach to giving people Holy Communion. You know, well, with all these restrictions, how can I be? How can I? How can I beat the system? Right. Yeah. Yeah. And and we we did kind of well. Yeah. Well, we didn't we didn't cheat the system, but we worked with the system, and people were still able to. Exactly. You know, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. No, it was wonderful. Um, so changes in the church. There are quite a few. Um, any ones that particularly stick out for you? I know we've gone through. We've grown through a lot here. Changes. Uh, well, as as a priest, you know, I was taught in the old way, you know, before the council, and then and then after the council, and uh, you know, uh, the the vernacular was good, but people do not know, and even I hate to say, some some of the priests do not know. The, the, the document or uh, uh, the, uh, the uh, liturgy of the church. And, and you know, uh, what happened is Latin wasn't thrown out the window as, as, as happened. Uh, but we were supposed to use the vernacular, but also Latin. And this was the big change. And what happened was there was a lot of experimentation and some of it wasn't wasn't good at all but um, and you know especially in the 60s and 70s uh, it, it, some of the stuff that went on was was not good the difficulties was you know uh, especially you know when the 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 celebrant was turned around to face the people you know that was something different and you know Pope Benedict, if anybody read his uh, book on, on the liturgy, the things that he said 
one wondered why he didn't introduce them. But I guess it might have been too, too difficult. But once the priest was facing the people, you know, he became an actor. And some of them became actors. And, and you know, but when you look at, when you really look at, at, uh, at the, the liturgy of the, uh, uh, of the church, and especially the, the, the Mass, the prayer of the Mass is directed to the Father by the people and the celebrant. And so there was nothing wrong with the people, uh, the priest uh, having his back to the people because the prayer was directed east right. to the Father, you know. He was our facilitator, the priest, and That's it was right. all, you know, I still watch it, the Latin Mass now again from the National Shrine down in the States, and uh, it's a pretty beautiful experience, really. You Absolutely. Know, you know, and and why, you know, people, like I've, st I've spoken with young people and so on, I said they, they, they've never experienced uh, what we, uh, you know, what we grew up in. And, and and what people are looking for is discipline. And we lack that in our society, and you know, and that crept into the church. And this is why there was such a, uh, there, and there still is a love uh, for, for the Latin Mass, despite the criticism. Uh, that has gone on. Anyway, we'll be good at that. No, yeah, no, that's that's definitely one of the biggest changes that we've seen. Yeah. Like you, you came through that. Oh, oh. I was I'm a little young for that, but the, I can't I can't begin to imagine how everything had to change over. You had to construct an altar now that had to be out facing See, the people. Exactly. Over here we took the pulpit down that was on the pillar which That was a magnificent pulpit in here I and I, I don't know where it disappeared to. Yeah. You know. And St. Patrick's in Hamilton had the same one. I think I'm rid of it. We should we should try to get it for here. <laughs> but I, I see the old pictures and it was just just gorgeous. You oh, know, the whole absolutely. sanctuary was just absolutely. And then it got really yeah. watered down to basic. You know, so you know. we didn't have the PA systems that we have now, and so this uh, the the speaker had to be up above it, and so the sound carried Project over the it. people. Yeah, yeah. 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 it was yeah. a beautiful beautiful oh. pulpit. Exactly. Were you ever on? Did you ever go up that? Just yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Um, so your personal faith journey is quite, quite exceptional. You've had quite, uh, you've you've seen quite a bit. You've done quite a bit. You've ministered quite a bit. Um, what would you, if you had any advice for clergy? Because we've had, actually had the fortunate ability to see Luis and Carlos uh, kind of come through here. Now we've got young Joseph coming through. Uh, we've got Luis is going to be ordained in uh, in July, and then. Uh, God willing, uh, Joseph will be, you know, in a few years. Yeah. So, any advice to these young gentlemen coming up that you might say? My one advice is, and it's taken me 65 years, <laughs> <laughs> you know, grow to know Christ more and more. You know, it's so important. To know Christ, you know, I I, I used to uh, <clears throat> sometimes I would suggest during Lent when people said, "Well, I don't know what to do." I said, "Take a gospel, and just through all of Lent, take a little each day, uh, read a little bit each day, and uh, get to know Jesus." You know, it's uh, and and you know personally. Uh, I, I see myself really blessed in the sense that the number of saints that I met, John the 23rd, Paul the 6th, uh, John Paul the 2nd, uh, Mother Teresa, I met all these people. I was in their presence. And I, as I look back, I, you know, without realizing at that time, you know, I was in the presence of saints. Yes. I was in the presence of saints. So, as I say, you know, that's a. So thing. you say, get to know Jesus. That's not all that different from what you tell us on Sunday when you when you when you preach to us sometimes. Yeah. And I remember that during Lent, you'd mention that pick a pick a gospel passage or something. I remember that 
So, you know what? I, I think what, what is good for the young fellows coming through is also good for us as well as Catholics practicing week to week. I think that's good advice. And, and it's things like that that stick with me. Well, I'm going to share with you the memory that I have now. Okay. There's two, there's two things that I... The fact that you can still go visit your sister, I think is fantastic. And um, that she's just down the street, not too far. I think that, that that's really fantastic. And the other one was, I was an altar boy, and we were, I think it was Father Charlie Legg, and maybe some of your Legg Canadian. So we were at a hockey game in Hamilton, and um, we had to come back to Guelph, and I guess you were coming back to Guelph too. So I got to drive in your car exactly. with you back from Hamilton, and your diplomat, your Dodge diplomat. <laughs> and just as a young guy thinking, oh, I'm in the car with the bishop. But like, I mean, that was, for a young guy, that was, that was pretty, yeah. you know, in the fact that, you know, you're just a calm, cool driver. People cut you off and you'd be like, that's oh, okay. He's a smart aleck and stuff like that. But just the fact that I got to drive from Hamilton with the bishop, I thought that was, that was pretty good for me. Like that, that is a big memory I have. Well, that's great. You know, and, um, cause I, I don't know where you were at the time, but you might've been in Guelph. I don't know if you were back then, but that's going back a while with Father Charlie Lake. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know? right. yeah. And, uh, but, but to me, things like that and all the confirmations, that we've we've done together, and um, when I was in Alora for a bit, you That's coming right. up, and it was just pretty, you know. Um, well, one of the I'll tell you, and it's uh, one of the nicest compliments that is uh, that I cherish it was by a woman in Kitchener. Uh, came up to me and said. Uh, I forget what it was all about, whether I had anointing of the sick there for people and so on. She said, she says, I want to tell you, you're a people's a bishop. And I've always cherished that, that, you know, that, that people, uh, that they took me as, as a Christian, uh, you know, that I was a bishop for them, as as, as uh, St. Augustine says. But that, that that they recognized that I was a Christian with them, right? You know, and that was from Lady Kitchener. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Did uh, you ever serve any parishes in Kitchener? Were you in any no, parishes in no, Kitchener? No, no, no. no. I, I, confirmations. Confirmations, of course. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All of it. I, I think I've had I had confirmation in every parish in the diocese. Yeah. Over yeah. the years, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, so the, the second last question I had was just uh, memorable moments. But you mentioned make, meeting all these people like Mother Teresa and, and, and these, these various John Paul the John Paul II, 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 II. Yes, exactly. Francis? Yes, I've been. Okay, so there, yeah, yeah. Yes. So there, so, I mean, <laughs> those are pretty memorable moments. I they, don't know they, if they, they have been. They, yeah. they, they, or should they, I should say, they, yeah. they were. Do you miss going to Rome? Yes, I do. Yeah. I, you know, and so it, the, the reason is, Every time I went, to, I, I would always search out something, you know, and, you know, uh, there's a lot of things to see. Is it like a refresher for you? Oh, yeah. In your faith and everything? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because we had a music workshop right before Easter when John Moss put it together for us down in Hamilton. And a lot of people were like, oh, the week before Easter, bad timing. But I thought, this is perfect timing to get all hyped up and renewed in our faith for the big Easter weekend coming up. And I know I came out of there and I was all charged up. And I think that's, that's, you that's know, like my role, you know? What will <laughs> hit you is that here is, you know, the seed of Christianity, you know, and <laughs> the rest of, the rest of Rome is as pagan as it was when, when Peter was yeah, there. Yeah. <laughs> well, just the size of the basilica exactly. alone, right? You know, and then you leave those walls of the square and it's just like a normal city. Well, the, <laughs> you know, the, the number of times that I've said Mass in St. Peter's, but always in the uh, uh, in the chapels. Right. Down, down Did you ever kind of celebrate at the main altar at all? No. 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 Just out in the, in the no. congregation probably as another bishop uh, there at the time, right? Yeah. But, yeah. But never, but never is no, up there, no, no kind of thing. That's, no. Uh, but now uh, uh, Pope Francis has, has stopped that, and so there's always uh, a concelebrated mass at at, uh, at the uh, altar of the Holy Spirit. Okay, okay, yeah. wonderful. Yeah. And now it's nice that they've moved John Paul, Saint John Paul out. He's got his own chapel, kind of thing where his 
Yeah. Where he's laid to rest there now. Yeah. And uh, wonderful. Well, last last question. Reflections um, on, on, on your time with the Hamilton Diocese and the Catholic Church as a whole. Anything that, um, as you reflect after, you know, we, you just had a birthday. You're, you're, I'm not going to tell the number, but 65 years ordained. I mean, legacy and reflections. Anything, last thing you might want to say or, or talk about or, or just share? Well, one thing, and it's, it's nothing new. John Paul II said it one, uh, on one occasion, and I believe it very strongly, that what is sustaining the goodness in the church is the people that we see at weekly mass. That's the thing that sustains me, and, uh, and, and, and you know, these are the people that, that are praying and, uh, as you might say, uh, showing the, uh, the work of Christ among us, really, you know. And I want to commend you. Your music is, is very uplifting. Uh, you may not notice, but you have trem improved tremendously from the day that I knew you first. <laughs> As an altar boy, yeah. and then if John Marin was sick, and then Monsignor yeah. Newstead would be like, come on, can you go up and play? I'm like, okay, so, you know, right. away I went, right? And then that's, right. that's basically how I kind of got, got knocked right. into it. But I think I got really worried after COVID because I thought, will the people come back? Well, that very first Mass we had, where we opened the church up and we had that morning Mass, and the people came up, they were lined up to come in before the doors were even open. Right. I thought, this is encouraging. And even to this day, the crowds that we still get on the weekend, unbelievable, really, yeah. you know. It's, well, it's the liturgy. It's the liturgy, what, you, what, you know, what you're doing with the choir and so on and so forth. All of that is contributing to. Uh, we do have a, we do have a good liturgy we here. Are, with, we are uh, we are. Uh, Father Ian has done a wonderful job. He, to, he uh, has he has. Yeah. He, yeah. Because and you know, uh, I I I I, I wish. It, well, I have nothing to say, it, but uh, he would be a good diocesan liturgist for us. He uh, he's a wealth of knowledge that you know that, that's he's right. forgotten more than most people will ever know about, you know. He's uh <laughs> if right. I ever have a question he's got the answer right away. That's right. You know he's that's just right. he's so good. Yeah. Well Bishop I want to thank you for uh, taking your time today. Not to just talk time. to us and let people know. Because I'm sure a lot of people see you every week and they like, you know, but now they get to know you just a little bit better. And uh, I really appreciate you taking the time to, to speak Well, thank today. you for, for asking. Thank you very anyway. much. All right. Well, thank God you. bless. God bless. Thank you very much for joining us today, one-on-one -on -one with Bishop Matthew Yastricki on From the Tower. Join us next time for another special guest coming up soon in a couple of weeks. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. See you all again soon.